The reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jesse travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you, Brother Ford. And I didn't take the time to build my faith to believe it in because I ain't got enough faith to believe in that extra money. I do want to participate because I'm committed. But folk that's not committed be like, well, you know, he said the Lord told him, I'm going to see. Quiet and Zion. Let's move on. There were two words in there that was, that was used in line with uh, believe not. And it, it meant to have no belief or to be unbelieving. That was another word that, that meant willfully disobedient and refusing to believe. Now, Jesus on the road to Emmaus, we always talk about the fact that, Jesus, that the men said, did not our hearts burn while he talked to us by the wayside. But there's another passage in there that I never hear preached when Jesus said, oh, slow to believe and slow of heart. He said, you, you, you slow to believe. There's a lot of folks, you know, they got to they gotta feel their way through everything. Let me see. Now, you you have to finish line before they believe you run the race. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then there was five words when he said, no faith. And it actually meant faithless. It meant no activity, disbelieving, without Christian faith, literally to be a heathen and untrustworthy. Well, I was glad to see heathen in there because every born again man has the measure of faith and we are faithless and without Christian faith. But my problem is, is in the Bible when people join church, uh, they call them believers. They said believers were the more added to the church. Well, if we are all believers, why is there so much unbelief? among the believer. Mm. We got unbelieving believers in the house. I feel you. Let's go on to St. John chapter 4. Uh -huh. See, we, we, got, we, we got to get to this place. If I'm a believer, then I need to be a believer. Come on. What, 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 is, a, what is the believer doing not believing? An unbelieving believer. You a believer, but you don't believe nothing. In St. John chapter 4, there's a tremendous verse here that Jesus brought out in verse 48. He said, then said Jesus, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Now, I, I'm prone to believe that that's for the sinner. That's for the unbeliever. They got to be persuaded by manifestation. But the Bible said to Philip, amen, the Bible said to Thomas, Thomas, you believe because you have seen. Blessed are they who have not seen and yet believe. So I'm telling you that we are supposed to be having a show and tell gospel. We should be able to take it to the world, amen, display it until they begin to believe because they see God do what we say God can do because they see his manifestation, because they see his glory, because they see his power. Do you not know when Brother Poole built that church down in Desark? That was, that, was, that was haters that said he can't do that down here in Desark. Well, once he got it built, you know, that was a few folks that just came to see. They didn't want to come to worship. They wanted to come look at it. And when they got in there and saw Mm, he did good. The Lord been good to him. Now they believe that you can do it in desert. Why? The vision speaking. But my problem is with, with the church folk that don't believe nothing. Except you see signs and wonders, you would not believe. Now, now let's, let's, go, let's, let's go to what's probably the theme of scripture, Mark chapter 9. Uh, th this is the place where I want, I want the saints to, to begin to get a hold to something when you got unbelieving believers. In Mark chapter 9, Jesus had been on the mountain of transfiguration, prayed until his countenance changed. Is your prayer life changing your life? Does your praying ever change you? Does your praying do anything for you? Uh, it bothers me for you to hold a prayer line and everybody you pray for get deliverance and you put, the, put down the oil bottle and you still bound. Your prayer life should change your life. 
When he came down, and, and he, he was nine disciples that were not up there with him. And when he came down, there was a tumult going on. And he went there and found out what was going on. And the man said, Lord, I brought my son to your disciples. He said, teacher, I brought my son to your students. He said, mentor, I brought my son to your protégés. He said, I brought my son to your crusade team because I heard about the miracles. I heard you gave them an all bottle down in your hometown, and they went about healing the sick. So I came down here, and they took that oil that you gave them, and they anointed my boy with your oil and prayed for my boy in your name, and nothing happened. And then he said, Lord, since your, your, since your, since your students can't do nothing, since your protégés could not do anything, if thou can do anything. He, he got doubt in the Lord because the preachers couldn't do nothing. You know, with unbelievers now, see, we're the only Jesus they're going to see. And if, if we can't manifest what we say, then they say, well, maybe, maybe the Lord ain't going to do nothing for me. So then in verse 23, the man said, Jesus said unto him, uh, if thou canst believe, all things are what? Possible, attainable, can be accomplished for you. See, here it is. He said, no, you say, if I, can, if I can do anything. But Jesus said, no, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to them that believe. See, we got to get to the place. And then I began to look here, and uh, I began to do a little bit of research. And I saw, amen, that the word believe was in the Bible 45 times. 41 times, it's in the New Testament. Amen. And it means, amen, then, 40, then four times it was in the Old Testament. And then I looked up believed, past tense. It was in the Bible 116 times in the New Testament. Amen. It was 94 times that people believed. I'm trying to get you to understand in the church today, we don't seem to understand that we got to believe. I got to believe in God to be established, but I got to believe the man of God to succeed on my life's journey. See, when I get to praying, that's why I can't let you come talk to me negative about my man of God, because my deliverance is in his mouth. My prosperity is in his mouth. My healing is in his mouth. My hope is in his mouth. If I let you criticize him and ridicule him when he stands before me, I can't see a deliverer. I'm going to see the picture you painted. That's why I have to say, hey, talk to the palm. Talk to the palm. I can't, I can't let you talk to me bad about my man of God because when I go to hear the man of God, my expectation got to be up. My confidence got to be up so I can hear God through my man of God. And when I can and believe the man of God, then I'm going to prosper. I'm going to succeed in my journey. Now, that's another word, I, Mark chapter 5. It may, may, may seem like I shouldn't introduce this in a, in a message about believing, but I want you to know that believe it really comes from the word faith, and the word faith is in the Bible 247 times, and it's in the Old Testament twice, once in Deuteronomy 32, once in Habakkuk, but then the other 245 times is in the New Testament, and in the New Testament, out of 245 times, 238 times the word faith literally means to have total reliance on Christ for salvation. Now, salvation means more than deliverance from sin. It includes your prosperity, your healing, your wholeness, your wellness. And so, and it means, amen, to be to, to have a credence and a conviction of the truthfulness of God and his word. You got to understand, a lot of us are still not convinced that this Bible is truth without error. We are mentally assented. Watch, 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 watch Mark chapter 6. We just skip the preliminaries and go down to verse 5. And he could there do, oh, now, now, don't, don't let me go too fast. He could where? There do no what? Mighty works, save he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. Now flip over to Matthew chapter 17 and read two verses there. Same little piece here. I want you to see something. In Matthew 17 and uh, verse 19 it says uh, that, that Jesus said here to his disciples, he said, why could not we cast him out? Talking about when, that, when, they, when they came to that young man he said here to them because of your what? Now Jesus could there do no mighty work because of their, what? Unbelief. And then he told the disciples, you couldn't cast the devil out. Why? Now they, they, got, they got an oil bottle that came from Jesus himself. 
prayer clause, but, but yet they've been taught by the master, but yet they met this demon and they couldn't get the devil out. He said, because of your unbelief. The word unbelief is, is, uh, is in the Bible 16 times. 12 times it means faithlessness or simply to disbelieve. And Jesus could there do no mighty works, not because he wasn't anointed, not because he didn't have a revelation, not because he wasn't called, not because he wasn't supposed to be there, not because he was and as a matter of fact, in the Amplified Bible, it said because they did not believe in his divine mission. And see, that's what I'm trying to get you to understand. God, is a lot of men of God pastors that could not build the church because of their unbelief, that they didn't believe that God told a man to build a church, so therefore they wouldn't get with the vision, they wouldn't believe for the seed. They wouldn't believe for the resources. They wouldn't believe for the finances because the man of God could not do his divine mission because of their unbelief. Jesus was anointed by the power of the Holy Ghost, went down to his hometown and he could wear there, do no, watch this, might, now he, see, might, that's what, when I read it this afternoon, that just jumped out, it, it said he couldn't do no mighty works there, in other words, you got some folk who say, in Sherwood, you can do a little something for the word, you can do a little something for the kingdom, but don't do nothing mighty, don't build no mega work, don't reach the world, don't reach the nations, don't hit satellite, come on, no, not in Sherwood, in Sherwood, you can just be on VTN, just do local, statewide television, don't hit no sky angel in Sherwood. Don't hit, no, don't hit no internet in Sherwood. You in Sherwood preaching to China or what that's going to, they ain't going to never join our church while we got to preach to them. You in Sherwood reaching Italy. That don't make sense. Why you want to reach Russia in Sherwood? See, don't, don't worry. The people, have their unbelief don't want you to do no mighty works. But baby, God can not only just build a church in Sherwood, he can build it debt free. If you believe in God and believe the man of God, and then he can do some mighty works. All he need to get the mighty work done is you to get the unbelief out. You get some faith going. Unbelief is faithlessness. He could there, T-H-E-R-E, do no mighty works because of their unbelief. Their unbelief paralyzed Jesus' anointing. The man said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. But yet, he could not do it there because of their unbelief. And I'm trying to tell you, sometimes the man of God get to a place and look like, won't no rivers flow out of his belly. Won't no life come out of him then bless God. I know folks get on the bus with their pastor, drive 25 miles down the road, and the pastor preach like a man from heaven. And all the members look upside his head and say, Pastor, you don't preach like this at home. He look around and y'all ain't hungry at home. Y'all don't pull nothing at home. Y'all don't bleed nothing at home. At home, you take me for granted. At home, you sit down. But these folks wanted something. It was in your man of God all the time, but your unbelief wouldn't let it out. So every now and then he get a headache here. Every now and then, amen, somebody would have sprained the ankle or quit limping. But you don't see cancer dying in the house. But every time the man of God goes somewhere, where they release their faith in what's in him, he come back with testimonies. He come back with miracles. But yet in the house, he got crutches around the wall that didn't come from nobody in the pew. Why? Because he couldn't that do no mighty works because of their unbelief. You got to believe in the Lord your God, but you got to believe your man of God. See, we 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 coming to the time. Go, go to. Well, let's, since we in Matthew, let me just go on to Matthew chapter nine. I like I like these two old blind boys anyway. They they got a hold to something. There were two old blind boys in Matthew chapter nine, verse twenty-seven, and Jesus departed. Then two blind men followed him crying, son of David, have mercy on us. Now they got a revelation that you the Messiah, you the son of David, you the one that should come, have mercy upon us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. I like the fact that he ignored them. He let them call a little while to see how serious were they, how determined were they. See, I preach a message sometimes, how bad do you want it? They begin to call and he kept, oh, 
walking. When he went in the house, they was blind, but the Bible said they found him. They, they couldn't see him, but they found him. They, they knew he was in there, but they felt their way. They found their way in there where he was, and they kept on crying, and Jesus looked at them and said, watch this. He said unto them, watch this. Believe ye. Do you trust? Do you depend on the fact that I'm able, that I have the ability, that I can do what you ask? There's a lot of folks praying who don't believe God can do it for them. See, they believe God can do it, but they're not sure he'll do it for them. So Jesus said, do you believe that I'm able to do this? And they said, yes, Lord. Watch this. Then touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith. First they had to believe. Now they got to lean on it. According to your confidence, so be it unto you. And the next verse says, their eyes were open. That means that they really did believe. See, there's a lot of folks who's praying positive phrases, but not the prayer of faith. It's not the prayer of faith unless it's faith in the prayer. Is this a bottle of orange juice? Why? Because ain't no orange juice in the bottle. If it was orange juice in this bottle, it'd be a bottle of orange juice, wouldn't it? I don't have to change the bottle, just change the content. What am I getting at? Saints are speaking, but what's in your word? Your words are bottles. Your words are vessels. Your words are containers. But what's in your words determines the results of your word. So you may be praying the same exact words that I'm praying, but yet you don't have any faith in your words. Your words are all right, all positive, but empty, void of faith. Their words filled with desperation, words filled with hope. Words filled with anticipation, but you got to have faith to get deliverance. God will walk over 10,000 hoping folks to touch one believing person. You got to understand that God is a God of faith. We just come on to that point. Watch this. Go to Acts 27. See, we got to wake up and realize it's time to believe this thing. You know, sometimes I used to, I used to wonder. I go to Africa, my God, and folk be coming. I was in a, in Nigeria, and they told they said there's an American here that's praying a prayer of faith that works. And I was over in the city of God relaxing, and the lady got there at 12 noon to the crusade ground, which was but two miles away, and nobody came to get me. I can I showed up at six o'clock, crusade at seven. I'm setting up the video camera. When I got the video camera, almost set up. They said a lady here to see you. I said, well, okay, when I finish, because I don't know how long she's been here, and I get the, I got a job to do. I get the camera set up, and it's about 15 minutes for service, so I said, well, where is the lady? Come to find out she's been there since 12 o'clock. I said, woman, I was two miles from here. Why? She said, oh, I don't mind waiting. Her baby had a fever of 105, and she was demon-possessed. But she heard that I prayed a prayer of faith that worked, and she didn't mind waiting almost seven hours to get her deliverance. But yet we can't even come to church because we don't feel good. Our baby too sick. We got to stay at home. And I want you to know, it didn't take 15 minutes. I laid hands on the baby. God instantly healed the baby. I cast the demons out of her. She got up and had to walk seven miles back home to her husband and her other children. And I said, God, why come in America? That person wouldn't have never got healed because they never would have got prayer because they never would have came because they never would have waited that long. They wouldn't have been there. See, you can, well, you know what it was? There was no alternative in Nigeria. Either God is going to do it or I'm going to stay sick. Either God is going to heal me or I'm going to stay possessed. But in America, I'll get me another prescription. I'll go see a specialist. I got good insurance. I'll go to another hospital. I'll go to another. We'll go to Memphis. We'll go all the way to Ohio trying to find a specialist. But we come the church and sing. God specializes. It's time for somebody to believe in God and believe the man of God and believe if the man of God lay hands on you in the name of Jesus that you're going to be healed. You're going to be made whole. You're going to be delivered. But yet we won't do it. The doctor tell you to take prescriptions that sometimes got side effects and ain't no side effect to prayer. Hallelujah. We're afraid to come down the aisle and let the man of God lay hands on us. But God wants to bring a people to a place of deliverance. Acts 27. They was out there on the boat. Storm came. Water getting in the boat. They getting scared. Throwing and tackling out the boat. Part of the bottom of the boat praying. 14 days, they ain't seen no daylight, no sunshine. Rain, the tempest didn't let up. Wind never did lighten up. The Bible said all hope was gone. Huh? All hope. Well, as a matter of fact, let's read from verse 20. 
And when the sun not stars and many days appeared, and no small tempers lay on them, all hope, expectation, anticipation that we should be saved. Now, we ain't talking about salvation from sin. We're talking about delivered from this storm. Was what? Now, that ought to open your eyes, religious folk. This storm didn't come to make them strong. This storm didn't come to build their faith. This storm took their hope. Do you not know faith is the substance of things hoped for? Things that's coming against you come to snatch your hope. The devil can't get your faith unless he gets your word. But if he can take your hope, your faith has nothing to produce. If he can take your hope, your faith ain't got nothing to act on. And you got to have, amen, strong hope in order for the power of God to be released. Your faith got to draw it. But if there's no expectation... All hope has been taken away. Watch verse 25. I'm just going to jump to verse 25. Now I better, I better let y'all get verse, 20, verse, verse 23. Well, I better back up to verse 22. Well, see, you better get verse 21. Cause Paul said, after long, watch this, abstinence. Notice he didn't say absence. Abstinence is absence. He been abstaining from food. Fasting for 14 days. See, in Matthew 17, where I read, Jesus said, because of your unbelief, how be it this kind can come forward by nothing but by prayer and fasting. We preach that always as this kind of devil can only come out by prayer and fasting. But this kind of unbelief and doubt can't come out of your heart except by prayer and fasting. Why? When you pray and fast, you shut down the flesh and the emotions and bring the spirit to the forefront. And your unbelief was in your head. Remember the man said, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. I got faith in my heart, but my head did him in trouble. So when I pull aside and fast and pray, meditating on the word, my faith level rises and unbelief is pushed out. Now I can release my faith and release the anointing of God. So Paul came forth fasting and praying, flesh shut down while they out there in the flesh full of fear. He came off the bottom of the boat full of faith. And he said these words. I told you not to leave, but you want to listen to me. Verse 22. I exhort you to be of good cheer. Now these folks ain't got no hope. And Paul said, smile. Be happy. Cheer up. Matter of fact, I want y'all eat a little something. God loves you. For that stood, there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. See, what am I getting at now? Now, you got to believe the man of God. All hope is gone, and the man of God comes with a word. He didn't bring no money. He didn't bring no life preservers. He didn't bring another yacht. He came with a word from God. And you're in their despair. When they were totally hopeless, a man that had been in touch with God come from the bottom of the boat in shackles with a word from God. He said, for that stood by me this night, the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. In other words, I know my God. He sent his angel to talk to me while y'all was up here full of fear. I was down there in faith, reaching out, and God has sent me a special messenger with a message saying, fear not. Fear was on the top of the boat. Faith was in the bottom of the boat. And when the angel came, he said, don't let that fear grip your heart. Don't let that fear get a hold of you. Paul, fear not. Paul, do not be dismayed. Paul, do not lose heart. If you take the F off of fear, it spells ear. And the only way for you to fear is to lend your ear to the accusations of the enemy. When Jairus came to Jesus, he said, come go home with me. My daughter lie at the point of death. When you lay hands on her, she'll live. He said, I'll go with you. The lady with the issue of blood got in the press, took her a miracle. Jesus turned around and said, daughter, thy faith have made thee whole. Here come a negative report that came to Jairus and said, why trouble the master any further? She is dead. Dead, and Jesus looked at him and said, fear not, only believe. Wait a minute. Where was fear going to come from? The man came to Jesus in faith. That negative report of the enemy came to bring fear. But as soon as Jesus heard that, ignoring what they said, he looked at Jairus and said, don't you change it. Don't come out of faith. Stay in faith. Only believe. Fear not, only believe. In other words, you said, when I lay hands on her, she's going to live. Well, just keep believing that. Keep believing what you have said. I'm in agreement with you. If you go to fear, we out of agreement. If you stay in faith, if you only believe, it shall come to pass. If you just believe this thing. And Jairus stayed in faith. When Jesus got there, he put everybody out. He took Peter, James, John, Jairus, and the mama. That's five. Five is the number of grace. Come on here. And Jesus had faith. And by grace through faith, he walked in there and took that girl by the hand and said, tell her they 
Kumai. Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And the Bible says she got up and she was hungry. What you talking about? He stepped in there and the gift of faith, the working of miracles, and the gifts of healing all begin to flow together. And a dead girl come to life and said, give me something to eat. Why? Because Jesus said, fear not, only believe. Stop giving your ear to the devil. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Fear come by hearing the word of the devil. Look what Paul said here. When there wasn't no man of God on the board but him, no other believer, everybody else was hopeless. He didn't look for no agreement. He didn't say, if I can just get one of y'all to believe. 269 doubt and fearful hopeless folk. Paul said, verse 25, wherefore, sirs, all the whole bunch of you, be of good cheer because I believe God. And then when Paul said, I got enough faith for the whole boat. Just come on, just, just, just get happy. Just get your smile back. Just get your joy back. I believe God. God gonna do it for me. And because my faith is out, you're gonna be saved too. Just stay on the boat. When they, they tried to get out the ship, he said, no, you gotta stay on the boat. You can't, don't leave the boat. So you gotta, I tell you, don't leave the church. Stay hooked up to the man of God. He got a word from God. He believes that word. If you just trust the man of God, stay with the man of God. Stay with the set man. God's gonna perform. God can't lie. You must convince yourself. God's not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, shall he not do it? If he spoke it, shall it not come to pass? The Bible said it's impossible for God to lie. My Bible said God cannot lie. So when the man of God got a word from God, according to Psalm 89 by verse 35, God said, I will not alter the thing that goes out of my lips. Once God speaks it, it's settled. Matter of fact, the Bible said his word is forever settled in heaven, and all you got to do now is establish it in the earth. But you got to believe your man of God. You got to believe. See, we, we believe in God, but we don't trust the man of God. You got to believe that the man of God is not out on a lark, that he ain't competing with his buddies, but that he was on his face one day, just enjoying fellowship, didn't have no mind to build nothing, and the Holy Ghost spoke and said, it's time, I want you to do this. Well, he looked out there, and he looked at your condition, because the pastor has always got compassion for his flock, and he said, well, Lord, you know, I, and I, and I ain't doubting you, but I'm just looking at the condition of the sheep, and God is saying, look at the condition of the faith. You just preach the word. You just put the word out there. If they'll just grab this word. See, I found out, if you you step out on faith. God will meet you where your faith is. Your faith would listen. I found this out. Your anointing would take you to the point of your faith. Yeah, whoever you focus on. Why you think you got some folks who've been driving cars that's too small for them all their life because they ain't got enough faith to buy a bigger six foot five driving around here in a Saturn. You know, crawl down in it. Saturn, you driving down the road all the knees on the steering wheel. It get good gas mileage. You got back problems. Come in the prayer line, man of God. Could you pray for me? You know what's wrong with you? Huh? See, I know that was a man of God. He came to my prayer line every year. I would go to their church, and every year, Pastor, he would be in the prayer line for his feet. And every year I'd pray for him, God would heal his feet. And the third year I was there. You've been encouraged through the uncompromising message that you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, send eight dollars for compact disc or twenty dollars for video to the reality of the gospel ministries incorporated p.o box 1640 91 little rock arkansas 72216 if you would like to become a partner with this ministry you may do so by joining the ally 200 club at 25 dollars a month or you may become a truth ally for ten dollars or more each month send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.